Somewhere in this image, Attack on Titan hid Pennywise the Clown. Can you spot him? See, while I was searching for Easter eggs, I found this panel and noticed something weird right about here. Look closely. You can see a small outline of Pennywise. But here's the thing. Is that really Pennywise? It's so hard to tell. So I found the official colored version of that manga panel and check this out. You can see his famous red balloon, proving beyond a doubt that it's Pennywise. But let's talk about the Easter egg that nobody's ever noticed. When Aaron experienced the paths, he saw several different realities, but there's one reality that the anime snuck in. Here, Aaron sees Mikasa and Armin, but not in the way you would normally see them. These are their characters from alternate universes, Goth Mikasa and Nerd Armin. In the same scene, I found a couple more Easter eggs. There's Reiner, Levi, and John enjoying the sauna together, which I'm definitely not complaining about. But there's one more Easter egg that came straight from the real world. This manga panel shows Armin and Mikasa as regular high school students. I bet Aaron wished he could live a normal life instead of having to fight man-eating monsters. And one of those titans did Marco so dirty. But there's an Easter egg in that scene that most people don't know. That titan who killed him? He's actually designed to look like AOT's director. Tetsudo Araki looks like this, and the titan looks like this. I don't think Isayama liked Tetsudo that much because he used him to kill off Marco. But Isayama didn't stop there because he also drew the voice actors of AOT as titans too. Dang, he's turning everyone into a titan. Believe it or not though, Armin's parents are the only characters who didn't get eaten by titans. The way they died is an Easter egg that was just recently confirmed by Isayama. At the beginning of the anime, Armin mentions that his parents had created a flying device. Tons of fans complain because their storyline was never completed. But two whole seasons later, the show stuck in a reference that explained what happened to Armin's parents. You see, a member of the military police was being interrogated, and he secretly spilled the beans about Armin's parents. He mentioned that a stupid couple tried to fly away in a hot air balloon, but they were killed by the military police. Some fans connected the dots and confronted Isayama about this tiny detail. And in one of his fan books, he confirmed the suspicion. And Easter eggs? Well, AOT has tons of them, especially their spin-off anime for kids because it's full of Easter eggs. One scene in the kids' show showed Frida Rice hugging Historia years before Frida was even mentioned in the anime. The funniest part is that anime only didn't realize it was an Easter egg until years later. But what really surprised me is the secret drawing of Donald Trump in the manga. Isayama has stuck in tons of real life people, but I didn't know that he threw in the 45th president of the United States until I found this scene. It's Trump as a Titan. Isayama's never confirmed that he intentionally did this, but after seeing the Easter egg up close, I'm betting there's tons of other Titan celebrities that I've missed. But there's nothing crazier than the Easter egg I found in the fifth opening of the show. You see, one minute into the song, the opening shows Armin as half Titan and half Burn. But it's only when I slowed down the scene to 25% speed that I found this clip of Crispy Armin, foreshadowing his eventual transformation into the Colossal Titan. That Easter egg happened at exactly one minute and three seconds, and it's at chapter 103 that Armin first transforms. Yep, the previous two Easter eggs weren't enough. Isayama had to add a third one that nobody would notice. For this next Easter egg, let's jump out of AOT and into One Punch Man, because there's a secret reference that blew my mind. In the very first episode, Saitama fought a giant that looks like a mix between the Colossal and Armored Titans. That's not all, because the voice actor for the giant is the same guy who voiced Aaron Yeager. But One Punch Man isn't the only anime that I found with AOT references. You see, Ervin shares a voice actor with Jotaro Kujo from JoJo's, and Ervin's not the only member of AOT that previously did JJBA, because Zeke's voice actor actually voiced Dio. That means the epic scene where Ervin charges at Zeke is technically a showdown between Jotaro and Dio. Not even a series as good as AOT is safe from just being a JoJo reference. But the Easter egg in this scene might just be the craziest one yet. See, back in the day when memes were hella ugly, this kid was one of the most popular characters in existence. He was so popular that even the creator of AOT saw the meme, so Isayama decided to sneak the kid into the manga. This classroom of kids seems normal enough, but when you take a closer look, you can see one kid in particular who looks really stressed. When you put this kid next to the meme, you could see their exact replicas. But crazily enough, this wasn't the only meme that Isayama hid in Attack on Titan. If you saw this picture a decade ago, it probably made you laugh for hours. So when Isayama needed to come up with art for one of his AOT chapters, he decided to recreate the image with Eren, Mikasa, Armin, and Levi. This is the inspiration, and this is Isayama's copy. Unfortunately, AOT's cover art isn't canon, so this never officially happened in AOT. That's just wild. But not as crazy as the AOT Easter egg added to Cyberpunk 2077. You see, the video game added the scout salute to the game as an emote. And if you think that's wild, one of the Pokemon games took AOT Easter egg 
upgrades to the next level. In Pokemon Legends Arceus, this mother tells her son that he can play wherever as long as it's within the village. But the kid channels his inner Aaron Jaeger and says, but I want to go outside the walls. I also found an NPC in the game with blonde hair named Zeke. Now that may be a bit of a reach, but there's no way both of these were coincidence. Attack on Titan's creator loves the Star Wars movies, and there's one character in particular that he just had to hide in the anime. You see, in episode 3 when the trainees are being roll called, there's a certain name that flew right over everyone's head. Samuel Link Jackson, or Samuel L. Jackson, was called. This easter egg was extra hidden because it only showed up on screen as a subtitle and was never verbally said. So if you watched that episode in English, you wouldn't have caught it. But for the next easter egg, we gotta talk about Hanji, because something she did in the anime was actually a reference to this guy, Scotland's most famous cannibal. At one point in the anime, Hanji captured two titans and named them Sonny and Bean, which nobody paid attention to. But Isayama didn't just make these names up. You see, Sonny Bean was the name of a real-life cannibal from the 16th century. He led a clan of people who would cook up others and chow down on them. When Hanji told this story in the anime, a lot of people thought it was made up, but it's scarily true. But what really freaks me out is how many anime shows reference Attack on Titan. Like here in Servant X Service, you could see the AOT military uniform being hung up in the background. There's also Watamote, where they do the same military salute. In Nisekoi, they built a super impressive sandcastle replica of the walls complete with titans. I also found Mikasa appearing on a plane in Daily Life of the Immortal King. Looking for all these AOT references sent me into a bit of a dark rabbit hole, where I found a show called Kiss Him, Not Me, where four guys have a crush on the same girl, but she wants them to date each other instead of her? Yeah, it's a pretty crazy plot, but back to the subject. This show was filled with AOT references, from the main character saying he was in love with Captain Levi, to the cast dressing in military uniforms. But let's talk about a copycat anime that you'll actually recognize. In Jujutsu Kaisen, there's a scene where Itadori and Nobara chase down Megami, but their run is identical to an abnormal Titans run. And before you get mad at JJK for copying Attack on Titan, remember that Isayama did his fair share of copying too. He's a big fan of American TV shows, and the series he likes the most is Game of Thrones. The show has influenced him a lot, from the gore to the way main cast members can be killed off at a moment's notice. The most obvious influence was when he secretly added a couple Game of Thrones characters to the manga. But let's talk about my favorite Easter egg from the entire show. See, Isayama was running out of ideas for Attack on Titan's cover art, so again he took inspiration from one of the biggest shows in the world, Friends. Here in this cover art, you can see the AOT characters as high schoolers posing together, but it's actually a recreation of the original Friends cover. I guess Aaron's looking so sad in the background because he's the only one not imitating a character. Poor guy. But on a more serious note, I found a frame in AOT that memorialized one of the biggest tragedies in history. You see, when the Titans first attacked, a frame showed a giant mushroom cloud in the middle of the city, and Aaron narrated, on that day, humanity remembered. With humanity being a metaphor for the people of Japan on the day the atomic bombs were dropped on them. It's pretty tragic, but I respect Isayama for including that in the anime. But when you think about Easter eggs in a show, the author normally doesn't throw them in the first scene. Guess what? That's exactly what AOT did. In episode 1, when Eren wakes up from a dream, he tells Mikasa that her hair had gotten long, which was weird because at the time, she already had long hair. But this was actually a huge hint of what was to come. You see, Eren was seeing the future in his dream. A future where Mikasa had shorter hair. Fans were speculating about this for years, but there's one other Easter egg that had them going crazy. When the show first came out, a lot of people were trying to discover the significance of this guy. He's just sitting there, but it seems like the animators intentionally put him there. I'm guessing that the shady dude is Aaron Yeager from season 4. They look completely alike, but unfortunately, Isayama has never revealed if this was intentional or not. But what really sucks is the movie they made for Attack on Titan. Click this video to find out why.